Welcome to the session on entrepreneurs and mentors, a hero's journey. My name is Tony Berry. I'm actually a serial entrepreneur who has set up 18 startups, 14 of which were in the Middle East and four are outside the Middle East. But my life was blessed as an entrepreneur and I'm really grateful to Malcolm Gladwell. Has anybody read the book, The Outliers? In there, he says, meaningful work comprises three elements. The first one, it has to be complex. And being an entrepreneur is certainly complex. The second one is autonomous. Again, being an entrepreneur, you're your own boss, so you're autonomous. And the third is a direct relationship between effort and reward. So I'm grateful for him for articulating that for me. From the outset, I would just like to congratulate Abraj Capital for putting on today's great event. But most importantly, not only for leading this event, for financially supporting SMEs. And not only are they supporting SMEs, but they have harnessed and captured mentoring as a key element of their program, for which we are now co-venturing with them. As part of my journey, I recognized very early on the Herculean efforts that entrepreneurs make and undertake within the society. And this was captured by a book, for those who haven't read it, it's a great book, written by C.K. Prahlad called Fortune of the Bottom Pyramid, in which entrepreneurs were able to create sustainable businesses, highly profitable businesses, meeting the needs of the very poor and employing many from the very poor. I have personally gained tremendously from a myriad of mentors over my life. And mentoring covers both your personal life and your business life. And today, we've still got people coming in. <laughs> Maggie, Maggie, can we just close the door now? I'm not sure that's going to work out. We've got so many people in the room later on for the mentoring that takes place. So in 2008, I founded the Mowgli Foundation such that we can mentor entrepreneurs. And why did we do this? First of all, for the entrepreneur, we wanted to create wealth, but wealth not for its sake, but primarily to have alleviation of poverty through employment. Secondly, we, we wanted to champion what is called now effective reasoning. And effective reasoning basically means you get the job done. And that's what entrepreneurs do. And thirdly, enhance philanthropy. Most entrepreneurs, yes, they take a lot out, but they give a lot back. And this is with the well-known names of Bill Gates and Warren Buffett and other people of that nature has happened. What is the journey for the mentor? It's to achieve a greater quality and depth of leadership through what I call the serve to lead model. And this is now being achieved through each one of our mentoring programs. Secondly, to provide the mentor with an entrepreneurship understanding, because many of the mentors who we attract are business executives, not necessarily who are entrepreneurs. And finally, it's an opportunity for them to give back as part of their spiritual journey. Where does the word mentor come from? It's a Greek mythology. And in the Greek mythology, I'm just reading Anna, a term meaning a father-like figure, like a teacher. That's where the mentor word comes from. Mentors are required by entrepreneurs at critically three stages of their life. The first is during startup when they go through this negative cash flow and they're saying, holy shit, am I going to make it? And they go further, should I give up or should I get... Only 20% pick it up on the, what I call the hockey stick. 80% crash and burn. It's really lonely when you're in that situation and they make a rational decision. So by having a mentor, we hope that we can change the 20% success rate to 25%, and that will increase the population of entrepreneurs by 25%. Secondly, during growth phase, an entrepreneur is quite often not the right person to lead the growth of a business, putting the business process in place and everything else. Who's going to tell the entrepreneur at that time to give up his baby? He has to have somebody he trusts. The third phase is when the entrepreneur becomes highly successful. 
he gets a lot of money, he's got a lot of power, his ego gets pumped up, his arrogance gets pumped up, and his hubris gets pumped up. And then he has what I call the Tiger Woods moment, which we've all seen over the last few years happen. <laughs> Let me introduce a few of the Mowgli heroes today. First of all, Ian Prosser at the end, who's a mentor. Nadine Asma here, who's both a mentor and a mentee. She's the first person to do both. And Anton Samaha, who's been mentored by Nadine. So we've got a mentor and a mentee. The same mentee being a mentor to a mentee. So it's interesting to get them all three together. Welcome. <laughs> Maybe today. So what have we got in store today? Now he's one of our mentees, but he's not part of the story. He's, he's here attending and helping us. In fact, we've got another one somewhere. Here we are, Hussein, and also Ian Mackay, who's a mentor as well. So we've got plenty of people around. So what have we got in store for you this afternoon? And I'm not quite sure what the numbers, how we're going to handle this, but we'll try. Firstly, Ian is going to go through what we call an understanding of the hero's journey that each mentor and mentee go through. Then we create an opportunity for each one of you to be mentored and menteed within the time available. And that's why I'm a little bit concerned with the numbers that's fitting this room. This will then be followed by a discussion with the mentors and mentees about their own journey, what they've learned through that journey, and what they can then take with them forward. As you can appreciate, to fit all this in within one hour and 15 minutes is going to be tough. So I just appreciate from now on is if we can try and minimize the time in moving around as it will take place. So no further ado, Ian, you want to have a crack with the hero's journey? Um, thank you for coming. Um, I've uh, uh, been to the Middle East a number of times, but as you know, as a Westerner traveling in the Middle East, you can travel here and never really experience the Middle East. You kind of get a bit protected from everything. Um, I've been now been here for, I don't know how long, it's, it feels like months, I think it's a few days. I had the chance to go to the Young Arab Leaders Conference, which took place on Friday and Saturday of this week. And I have been utterly blown away by the passion and the commitment that exists here that if anything is going to bring about change, it's entrepreneurship. I have, you know, it's one of those things that people talk about, but I have breathed it in since I've been here, that there is a sense of, I don't know, passion and drive and pride that I've experienced um, since I've been here that has left me breathless. And uh, I feel very, very privileged to be here, so thank you very much. The, um, we uh, have a, uh, a kind of a way that we introduce the notion of entrepreneurship within the mentor, the, the Mowgli mentoring program. I just thought it would be nice, it would only take a couple of minutes, just to kind of give you a view about how we view mentorship. And could you stick the, the next one? Next one. The, the thing about very often in the West, it's quite easy to develop a career um, that is safe, that is profitable, that will care for you and your family, where you never have to take much risk. You know, I do, I, I work as a management consultant and an organizational coach, and I meet lots of people at very high levels of middle management that have never taken a risk in their life and live a perfectly grand life on it, and I'm not critical of them. But, that that, but there's something about the entrepreneur that that isn't kind of quite it. You know, they may live in an ordinary world, I don't know if this is very clear, but there's something that they see beyond that, that somehow the ordinary world is not enough. There's a certain kind of sense of bravery or optimism or sense of possibility that says, is this all there is? You know? And sometimes I think people get driven into the notion of entre entrepreneurialism because they have no choice. You can only take an entrepreneurial path because there is no other way that you can make a living. But it is still a courageous step to take. Where if you can make a, a, a comfortable living and you choose to take that step, then it takes even more courage. And I think that it's that courage that entrepreneurs have in their heart, that sense that there's, that this is, life's a bit ordinary, there's gotta be something else that we can be doing in life that kind of kicks them off. If you wanna, and uh, so it's almost as if there's some kind of calling, something that makes us step out of the comfort zone to go and do something, which very often a lot of, a lot of people sit there and go, you must be crazy. I, um, it became clear to me at the age of 25 that I was unhirable. 
I'm, because every job I got, I got fired from. You know, so eventually you think the world's trying to tell you something. And the reason I got fired is, is that I was just a troublemaker. Why do you do it like that? <laughs> There's got to be a better way of doing things than we're doing it right now. So I would challenge status quo. Everyone would get completely irritated with me, and eventually I get sacked. Now I make a living doing that, which is kind of bizarre. <laughs> I, get, I now get paid to go in and go, why do you do it like that? Um, but there's something that calls you to go, I need to get out of this. I need to do something else. And, uh, and as you step out to take that step, the first thing is you get terrified. And I think many people have the idea of starting their own business, the idea of starting their own enterprise, and almost before they've got started, they go, no, no, this isn't good enough. Um, the, and usually the thing that prevents you from going back to the life ordinary and the willingness to continue on the life less ordinary is that you find a mentor. When I told my father that I was, gonna, I was, I was giving up my third career to actually go and start my own business, and my first business was not very sexy. It was an industrial cleaning company. The only reason I was in it was because it was an idea of a mate of mine had, and we thought, why not? So we went off and ran it. And I can remember, I, I bought my first Jaguar, and I took it home to my father, because my father always wanted a Jag, and I showed him my Jag, and he said, getting a bit above your station, young man, aren't you? <laughs> <laughs> I, was, you know, I, I, I didn't come from families that had Jags. But what happened is I met, I met, I met my, my true first mentor. Now, I've had many since then, but it's the mentor. Can you move the... It was the mentor that makes you take that step to cross the line, to go and start that business, to kind of take that leap of faith sometimes, where many other people are telling you, you must be mad. I've met loads of people here that today that have kind of told me little tales of that moment when you take the step. And I think that um, uh, uh, one of the things that's been interesting for me, I took part in a, a Mowgli mentoring program in Lebanon, is that the mentors, us, you know, mainly grey-haired, English guys with blue eyes, were talking about our mentoring experience and all of us could tell tales of um, how we were mentored, the, the important people that supported us in our lives. What was interesting is the people from this region, it seemed much rarer. People struggled to come up, you know, the mentor was dad, you know, or maybe a big brother. But the notion that there are people out there that would kind of help you take this journey seemed much rarer. I don't know if I saw just a, a, a small piece. But it was clear that this mentor, having the mentor makes an enormous difference in crossing the line. And then, and then, <laughs> next, <laughs> um, you, you, you discover how difficult it can be. People that work in large organizations who sit there and complain about their boss, they have no idea. They have no idea, because you can always blame somebody else when you're working in a large organization. Oh, well, it was him, and it was them, and it was her, and it was that and, all that, and all that stuff. When you're an entrepreneur, you know for fact that ultimately any responsibility for any success or any failure lives completely with you. And it's scary. And next. And there are times when it gets extremely dark. I've gone broke three times. <laughs> Probably because I'm not a very good entrepreneur, but I'm persistent. <laughs> So it's, you know, and there are, there are some dreadful times when you question, you, 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 you know, you, I think anyone here that's had their own business has had time when you've laid in bed at night and you can't get to sleep. Am I doing the right thing? Am I doing this correctly? Because the cost of getting it wrong is going to be immense and it's not just going to affect me. There's now people I employ. You know, I mean, it is a trial and it truly is a trial. And again, it's then that you go to your mentors, the, your supporters, the people that only want one thing for you, which is for you to succeed to kind of help you through those things. And next. <laughs> and, you know, and that's when the journey kind of really begins. I was li listening to the guy that did the 99 comics. What a great, anyone else go and see that? What a great story that is, all right? And again, kind of the ups and the downs and the journey of it, and now sailing and able to do things that really, really make a difference. I, th I thought his presentation was absolutely spectacular. And next. Um, and it changes your view of the world. It changes your view of life. It's like you're not in this place anymore. When you've been on the entrepreneur's journey or the hero's journey, by the way, the, the, um, uh, Tony mentioned that, the Greek, uh, that mentor is a Greek word for a trusted advisor. It was actually the name of the advisor that Odysseus had on his journey back to Ithaca after, in, uh, in the Odyssey. So the first mentor was called Mentor, which is kind of neat. Um, 
but it brings you with a whole new perspective of the world. And as a consequence, it is absolutely no accident that all of the great world's greatest philanthropists are all entrepreneurs. It seems to be a natural state that once you have gained, because as an entrepreneur you can gain an enormous amount, that it seems natural to give back. It's exactly what Tony's done, it's what Bill Gates does, does it's what Branson does, it's what pretty much all entrepreneurs do. And ultimately I believe that they are the biggest force for change in the world. So as entrepreneurs, entrepreneurs, hands up, I salute you. And um, uh, what we would like to do, who, who here as an entrepreneur has never had a mentor? That they would, okay. So what we would like to do is actually give you the experience of having a mentor-like conversation. This is like speed mentoring, <laughs> if you're up for it. <laughs> but it does require that we do this and we do it sharp and we do it quick. So is everyone willing to kind of play with us on this? Great okay. Time. Maggie is going around the back, handing out a piece of paper. Please, would you take one piece each? And we all talk in life about achieving a work-life balance. This is a, a stage in trying to manage that process. So we can get those papers handed out as fast as possible. And what we'd like you to do when you have got it, there's four quadrants. The top left-hand corner is what makes you happy inside your work. The top right hand corner is what makes you unhappy inside your work. The bottom left hand corner is what makes you happy outside your work. And the bottom right hand corner is what makes you happy, sorry, it makes you unhappy outside your work. Please take 10 minutes in silence and reflect for yourself, what does that look like? Just put down items inside each in the boxes. What makes you happy inside your work? What makes you unhappy? What makes you happy outside your work? And what makes you unhappy? As I said, 10 minutes from now. There are no wrong, right or wrong answers, by the way. That was fantastic. Um, who in this room at the end of that will not go and find a mentor? It, it is really, uh, having, having a mentor and mentoring somebody is really a great journey for each of us to take. Um, and I can only recommend it to all of you. Um, I, and I've been, a, I currently have nine mentors spread around the world. I fly to San Francisco to see one of them once every six months. Um, and it's, it really is life enriching. And likewise, I don't know how many mentees I've got, but they're still all over the place. And the mentor does not, by the way, for you, have to be older than you, it can be younger than you. Okay, um, where is she? My, my daughter is a great mentor to me, okay? And... So let's just welcome up now Nadine, Antoine. Hang on, bef just before we do that, just, just a quick show of hands. Who got value out of the interaction you just had? Okay. Uh, who think they just met a new friend? No. <laughs> just. <laughs> come on. Just. Are you going to sit down or are you going to stand up? No, I'll, I'll sit down if you like. Okay. So, Ian, do you want to crack on about your uh, his journey for your few minutes? Um, yeah, but just, uh, just to kind of, the, the last piece of this is just to share very quickly a little bit about the grief I've had in my life. I don't know why anyone wants to hear about that. but um, And then I think all of us are just going to share something about the experience of being a mentor and a mentee. Some of you here might want to be a mentor and some might want to be the other side. So there's some stories to tell. Um, Tony asked me to say, uh, you know, like the, the, the three greatest challenges that I had. And the thing about setting out on your own journey is, is that failure is inevitable. I don't know a single entrepreneur that hasn't hit the rocks at, one time or another um, and it's actually kind of quite sad thinking back about it because the first I mentioned that the first business I had was an industrial cleaning company with a guy called Fran Dorgan and Fran was a very larger than life character I was definitely the junior partner in the relationship and he died in a, motor, in a motorcycle accident because he was a madman um, and it was an enormous blow to me and I realized very quickly that I had no interest in industrial cleaning whatsoever but I was interested 
in working with this massive character who called Fran Dorgan. And I think that after that moment, it took me a long time to actually kind of get myself back together again to decide what I wanted to do with my life. I actually <coughs> went off on <coughs> the self-development path, you know, those of you heard of Esh trainings and Esalens and, and all that kind of stuff. So I went on a very long journey of sort of personal self-development um, and then ended up becoming a semi-professional mountaineer and ski coach, which was um, a strange um, career shift, I know. But I basically fell in love with the mountains and um, uh, all I wanted to do was find a way to fund being in the mountains. The trouble with being in the mountains is, is that you have a tendency to fall off them once in a while. And eventually I did fall off one and, uh, and I rather smashed myself up. And the business I established in the Alps was doing very well. And I went into hospital, a relatively well off young man, and I came out of it st staggeringly in debt and with a busted up body. So it was like, oh well, here we go again. And again, it took me a while. I think again, it was two or three years and the support of some fantastic friends that actually kind of made me get myself kind of out of bed again and go and start the journey all over. And in 1981, um, I was lucky enough to again meet other mentors and I started the first coaching business in the UK. We think, I don't know, certainly in 1981, we first started offering business coaching and I still work as a business, uh, an organizational coach. And, uh, 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 and every one of those dreadful falls, which, you know, to beat the, I, you pick yourself up. And I think half of the truth is I didn't know, have a clue what else to do, you know, and, and I knew that I was still unhirable. But, um, <laughs> but they were my kind of three, if I had to talk about, you know, the dark days. Um, fortunately, they're, they're few and far between, but they are, they are very real, so. Thanks, Ian. Nadine. <laughs> What's the question? <laughs> Uh, hi everyone. Uh, just also first to would like to thank Mugli and Veritech to ma make me part of this program. To be able to have someone beside you in this lonely journey as an entrepreneur and to have the opportunity to share and try to give back. So if I want to answer first the question which is um, what were the major challenges that I was facing that got me to this crossroad would be uh, first of all, uh, two years and a half ago, I lost my husband at the same time I gave birth. So that was a time where I had to uh, deal not only with the repercussion, but also that was a time for me to think and uh, regain myself and regain personal aspirations, spe specifically on the professional, um, spe uh, professional journey. And uh, that's a big journey where uh, got me to Beritech Incubation and uh, to meet the Mugli team. And that was the biggest challenge Ian has to had had to deal with. <laughs> um, and if I, if I want to go through the benefits of, of that, um, with his support, patience, and listening, uh, it gave me to articulate so many thoughts and ideas and uh, emotions, to articulate them in a clear objective, still ongoing. And um, in the same time, uh, it helped out with the brainstorming and it helped out for me to believe again and to believe outside the box. I still refuse to go back to the, this is why we're entrepreneurs, I still refuse to go back to the square typical uh, social boundary, these are the typical opportunities that you can go in. And it opened up really uh, incredible opportunities, uh, future possibilities. Uh, with Ian uh, in, in the organizational coaching, in the one discipline, or with Gilbert uh, Dumet uh, in, uh, in what he does. So it, it brought me up uh, into many fields uh, that I never uh, considered before. So. This is where I'm at. Thanks, Nadine. Hello, my name is Antoine Samaha. Uh, I, um, I was looking at the hero's journey, and uh, I would like to point out uh, in my life some, some, some points where, where how, how I describe my, wife through, my life through this uh, hero's journey. Actually, I was living in... <laughs> Life. <laughs> My wife is here, actually. Wife is but just over here. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Well, I was uh, f first. Well, here 
the entrepreneur needs a lot of courage to step out of the conventional uh, and the traditional way, the traditional path. I was in Paris, I was an employee, I had a good job, uh, nice salary, uh, good opportunities in the future and everything, and I always felt that I needed to do my own business. I was working in, uh, in software development in the day and software development in the night for, for my own uh, software product that I was developing. And uh, th so, uh, and, and until the, and, and at that point, you need a lot of courage to step out of this traditional way because uh, it's insane to stop a, a nice job, a nice career opportunity, and to say, yeah, I want to start and go out of Paris and say, I want to start my own company in Beirut in 2004, a uh, software development uh, business. So this is when I started. Well. <laughs> Uh, I, uh, this is where you need someone to encourage you, someone to, put it, to, to tell you just go for it. And then my, my wife did that at, in 2004 and we came back to Beirut and we started uh, the company called Zero One Barmaja, Barmaja for programming in Arabic. So, and uh, at, uh, now, uh, uh, this is one step, one difficulty, one big challenge to break the traditional path. After you break the traditional path, you have to find the new path. Because uh, when, you, uh, when you have an idea, an idea is a very nice thing, but the most important is in an idea is the execution. Now, <laughs> yeah, and usually uh, entrepreneurs are very afraid of talking about their ideas because it's a great idea and people might steal it. I had this and I still have it, but I've discovered that it's, uh, it's useless. You need to communicate your idea and uh, the most important thing is the execution and, and uh, the execution is in you. It's not in the idea, it's not in, in people stealing it, it's in you. So uh, now I'm communicating more and more my idea. This is also a challenge. Uh, and now, so, so in, in, uh, during the, the, when you break out of the, the this traditional path, finding the new path, this is where I started some products in my uh, company, but these products failed. And I have to admit that they failed. I have to uh, look at that uh, straight uh, in the eyes. And I, I shouldn't be afraid of, of continuing. I should carry on. An, an entrepreneur, I mean, in, in, in the US, uh, you are not uh, uh, credible. You are not uh, credible, if re yeah, reliable, if you, if you don't have some failures in your, in your portfolio. But, but, but here in the Middle East, we, we, we like to be always successful. I don't know. <laughs> so uh, so I, I, I failed. Uh, in, in these products that I have in my drawer, I didn't sell. Great products. Uh, I don't want to talk about these uh, right now. And <laughs> it makes you want to cry or something. <laughs> now, and you, you need to always uh, look forward and, and, and want to go ahead and, uh, and, and finding the path. And, and, uh, well, n now I'm in the process of finding the path and getting also out of this uh, period where uh, you still, uh, you, you, still uh, you are hesitating. Is it going to work or is it not going to work? But I think that this period is never ending. I don't know. I, I think that, I, think that all, I, I have seen some other people talking in conferences and, and they were saying that it's, it's a never ending process. You are every day wondering if you are going to, you achieve this big success or, <laughs> People said, don't you get scared when I used to go mountain climbing? Don't you get scared climbing mountains? And you went, yeah. <laughs> it's great. <laughs> so, you know, sometimes it's just, it's, it's a lot of fun in there as well. So. Yeah. Yeah, so, so, so that's it. So now, now we have found uh, the, the new product. Uh, this is uh, called uh, EverPro for Earned Value ERP. So we have this uh, ERP solution focusing on project-based businesses that will treat the, the project-based uh, business problem through the, ER, the, through the earned value methodology, which is a recognized uh, internationally uh, methodology. So, and, and uh, well, I'm lucky to have had a mentor in this period because uh, I, I, uh, I needed to jump out of the day-to-day uh, -day work because especially in, in technology, uh, you are, you are a, when you are an entrepreneur, you are a lot into the day-to-day -day work and you forget to step out and to have a, a global picture of things to, make, to be able to, do, uh, to make uh, good decisions and orient yourself. 
and your company. So um, through the mentoring with uh, Mowgli, uh, with Nadine, I had had the opportunity to always have someone to tell me, yeah, but draw back a little bit and look at the global picture, uh, take the time to think of, of the strategy and, and things like that. And also encouragement, because sometimes you feel you pass into periods where you are not sure of, uh, is it working or not, and, and, and you need this encouragement and uh, backup, uh, and, and uh, that's great, and Mowgli was providing this. And uh, what I liked most in, in, in the Mowgli is the fact that we spent uh, uh, some time, they, they spent some time to do the matching between mentors and mentees. And they, they, they uh, look at the behavior of mentors and mentees during a certain session. And uh, when the matching is done, so it's, in, in this process you have a certain trust relationship that is built. And this trust is important to capitalize on this period and on this trust to, to, to use it throughout the process, throughout a, a full year. And uh, uh, I appreciated this uh, methodology. It helped a lot. Okay, thanks. Thank you very much, Antoine. Thank you. So we'd now like to open up to questions and hopefully some answers. Alex, if you can just help whoever's going to ask a question with the microphone. So please feel free to ask any questions on mentoring, entrepreneurship, our journeys, our challenges, and how we enjoy living in here. I, I have a question, which is um, in the role of being mentor and also mentee. Um, what I find is I learn as much from my mentee as, and it's more of a conversation rather than let me give you my words of wisdom. Um, for example, when we sat here and, and talked, it was very obvious that we had very similar um, issues to deal with. Um, and so it became more of a conversation between the two of us in terms of how do we deal with these things. So I'm not quite sure how you set up, you know, that relationship. But we had a yeah. wonderful conversation. <laughs> <laughs> Absolutely. If there's a mentor and mentee, it's a symbiotic relationship. They both have to feed off each other. So if the mentor is not getting any satisfaction, he will stop mentoring. I mean, if I just go back to the Tiger Woods scenario, many of you will know that Tiger Woods' mentor is Mark O'Meara. What you probably don't know, in 2006, he gave up mentoring Tiger Woods. And it was really significant that in Augusta this year for the Masters, the first time that Tiger Woods was seen public on a golf course, who is his playing partner? Mark O'Meara. So he got back into the saddle of mentoring. Okay? So it has to be symbiotic. It has to be a win-win for both parties. And it is a conversation. Um, and both parties gain from it. What we find interesting, to, just to answer the question on the mentee-mentor, which Antoine made, at the end of the day, the mentee selects the mentor. And I see in the Middle East models run by companies quite often, they have a, a dictatorial, a, men, a, a boss is told, you will mentor this person, this person, this person. It doesn't work. And that's one of the single reasons why mentoring seems to have not worked here. The mentor selects, and what we do in today is not what I would call a positive selection, we ask the mentees who they would not like to work with. <laughs> and then that tells us who the people they would like to work with. Because at the end of the day, it can't be one-on-one. -on -one. So that's the process we go through to, to, to achieve that. And they work, by the way, for a full day together in a, in a workshop. So they get to see each other, how they behave, etc. I think also is, uh, <coughs> I mean, just from my experience of being a Mowgli mentor, I got involved with Mowgli last February in Lebanon, which is where I met Nadine. Um, the, uh, this is my third trip out to the Middle East since we first met. We're looking at establishing an office and a business out here. I've become enthralled by the whole, uh, the whole region and many of the people that I've met. And this happened entirely out of me being a mentor to, uh, to Nadine. Um, so when I, if I look at it, I feel I've gained equally, if not more, as much for, as, from the relationship as she did. And I, um, and I think it's why you know, we're, we're going to be friends for life. I mean, there's not a question. So. Yes, hello. Hi, everybody. My name is Ahmed Mtawa. I'm the Chairman and Managing Director of Mtawa Consulting Group based in Kuwait. Um, actually, spoken earlier with some people, probably look familiar here. I've launched uh, recently a concept I'm going to speak to on 625 at Spark. It's called Mubadir, the Innovative Entrepreneur. And it touches upon some of the elements you're, uh, you're coming across, the mentee and mentor. But also, we provide solutions packages to the entrepreneur to 
you know, to pursue with their packages. Now, the essence of, of, of the mentorship, or what I call them, my term is dream coach, is basically, um, it's very interesting because anyone who play even sports, like basketball, like the guy who was sitting next to me over here, he's passionate about basketball. And basketball, for example, you could either have two options to really play really well, either start on the streets and learn from the streets or have a coach in a basketball court and learn the proper way of playing basketball. Both ways could teach you the, the fundamentals, knowledge of basketball, whether it's street or whether it's, it's a coach. But street will give you more perhaps the street ways of doing things, right? Uh, maybe dirty plays, maybe uh, you know doing things around different than the procedure-wise in, in, in a court. So that's where you're, you're, you're touching upon here. I myself as a dream coach in Kuwait, I've done my education on the University of Southern California in LA and I've, I have a, uh, uh, perhaps we could talk later on how, how we could venture things in the uh, Kuwait market. Uh, the concept innovative entrepreneur is how to take the entrepreneur themselves from the regular typical types of an entrepreneur to someone become even innovative and shake the market they're in. And that's the idea is, is not because there's I've noticed from my experience there's so many entrepreneurs out there that actually copies each other's business models to to you know to get profits on similar things. I'm not really afraid of sharing an idea, but uh, or any entrepreneur shouldn't really be afraid of sharing an idea. But the idea is how to innovate that idea a hundred times better, make it really uh, a big uh, impact in the market. Uh, sure. I went to the Youth Arab League uh, conference and Ferdy is it F Fardy? Fardy was speaking there, and he, I just I'm just being a bit provocative here. He said, "Don't diss the small guy." Entrepreneurship comes in every scale and every size. And if Absolutely. all you're able to do is notice that there's a little bandwagon and get a bit of that bandwagon, that's great. And that doesn't preclude the, 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 you know, the guy that's going to do it a hundred times. But it's uh, <coughs> uh, anyone that kind of, if you, if you can find a niche and you can make that niche work for you, then all power to you is what I think. Absolutely. The example, a good example of this, actually, I mentioned earlier is a cupcake example. We see like a thousand people doing cupcakes all over the place. Isn't this really exciting? It's exciting, but the same concept is a chocolate, fondues, cupcakes, or glitter on top of it. There's so many of them. There's so many businesses. It's amazing. But the innovative way of doing this is actually having a machine in any theater that actually could create this cupcake. The same thing with the crepe, the, the French crepe with chocolate. For example, and you sell this machine to every single theater that could establish for you uh, the uh, But what, the what's interesting to me in each one of those stories is not so much the idea that's generated out of it. It's actually the development of the human being through those various processes. So every time you go into this little dive here, it actually generates within you a new learning. And it's that which drives the entrepreneur, both, by the way, in business terms, but also socially. And that, that's the element I enjoy. Okay. Please, there's one of... Uh, I just wanted to make a comment. Um, my understanding of the hero's journey, uh, th there's another point between nine and bringing the idea back to um, bringing yeah. the idea back to share it. Correct. Yeah. Correct. Okay. Please. Hi. My question is very basic, uh, not so um, detailed uh, as a friend over here. But basically, uh, you had mentioned that you have nine mentors, and one of them you go and see quite frequently in San Francisco yes. once every six months. Yes. I mean, uh, what is typically the the uh, basis on which you decide whether to have one mentor or five mentors because at the end of the day they may be saying five very different things and uh, it could result in you uh, just being totally confused as to how to go about doing things. I actually uh, have a personal experience to share. I mean last night I was with a friend who has um, been after my life to think really big you know in, in, in my business mm -hmm. and I'm like telling him, no, 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 slow down, you know, make sure you do it step by step. Uh, another friend may say something completely different. So, so that's one question uh, in selecting a mentor, number of mentors. The other thing is, does it have to be a formal arrangement in terms of uh, money involved or can it be an informal arrangement with friends and family? N none of the relationships are money. Do you believe in probabilities in business decisions? Yes? Yeah. Yeah. So if all nine mentors say to you the same thing, what do you think? Uh, all nine of them are right or all nine of them are wrong? Well, <laughs> if, 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 if all nine of them are wrong, 
you've selected the wrong mentors. Right. Right. Okay? So quite often you do find a split, especially when it comes down to not allowed to call tangible item, but a personal item, there's a split. Okay? You don't have to have nine. I just like collecting. <laughs> <laughs> but it, I, I would find today, for example, I, I, I find new mentors all the time. But is it, is it normal for me not to want a mentor and just to say you don't know what you're talking about and I want no, to No, 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 it, it is absolutely normal. It's normal. And okay. Until somebody has had the benefit of a mentor and experienced it, they don't know what you're talking about. Do normally people search out a mentor or does it just no, happen? No, uh, it the, 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 the reason why we did the first experience today was to give people sometimes the first experience of being mentored by somebody on what is a very personal subject but with a complete stranger. Okay, that, and that was the intention. Sorry. Excuse me. No. Um, I'm a coach and I work with people individually. Um, and I've had many clients to coach. And I find that very often I miss having a mentor from the days when I was in corporate because I don't find someone to challenge my thoughts and ideas. And I want someone to be a sounding board, someone who I could just go to and throw all the ideas that have, been, that have been going inside my head and knowing that he will not judge me in any way, you know, because my husband would judge me, my friend would judge me, right? And having a coach is different from having a mentor. Like, I have my own coach, but he cannot be my mentor. So, and as an entrepreneur, I found it really difficult to find a mentor because where do you go to find them, you know? How can I approach a person and say, hey, can you be my mentor, you know? So I'm really glad to be here and I'd like to know how we can, you know, make this happen for each one of us because, um, you know, as entrepreneurs, it could get lonely. I, I think you all heard today that Abraj through Red is launching Mentor Match. And what you'll have seen also is that Mowgli and Abraj are forming a joint venture to do so. And this will be an online tool. And w where's Richard Alderson? Where's Richard? Richard is helping us put that together uh, as a program for, for that, for the internet. Separately, always keep your eyes open for a mentor. It's amazing where they come from. Um, and yeah. Absolutely. Uh, no, 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 you, you have to build a relationship. And, and, and typically, you'll find it's like any relationship. There's give, there's, as Pamela said over there, it's two parties forming a conversation. And through your engagement, they, they become excited about you and they want to see you more often. Some of it's about being willing to talk about the stuff that you may not talk about to your friends and our mates. Yeah. You know, to actually sit there and go, you know, life is difficult. I'm struggling. You know, and, and to find something that you can have that conversation with. You know, I, I, get to, I don't do it as a professional, I do end up sometimes coaching senior executives. And it's mainly because I'm the only person they can complain to in confidence. You know, just get it out of their system. And then I say, and what are you going to do about it? And they'll often just come up with a solution. And um, what happens? Please. Well, it's the same question, but uh, practically speaking, we finish here. What shall we go? Uh, go online, put the. Uh, I mean, we want to. I'm convinced, Mowgli, what to do next. Are you an entrepreneur? I, I am. I have. Have, a, have you filled in the sheet? I did. Great. You were hearing for us. <laughs> <laughs> no, it, and then man to match will come on later on. Cause it, where, where's she gone? Because you can have four or five mentors using Mentor Match. Perfect. Okay. Is confidentiality a big part? Absolutely. Yeah. What, what you'll find it's like layers. You uh, you start sharing something which is confidential, but not really confidential, and you'll see if it's be handled properly. And ultimately, you go to the next level, and then the next level. If you haven't got trust in your mentor, he's not a mentor. I think the thing that's unique about what Mowgli is doing Just is that there are um, lots of people who provide support and hothouse, but they, they, they demand and expect, and probably it's fair, that they have a lot of information and stuff about your business. The, the thing about the Mowgli relationship is that it really is about you and me. Is Mowgli really inspired to become the book? Is, is that Mowgli no, no let, let, let me tell you, Mowgli was a name we've given to it. Okay, and for those of you, they, you all know Mowgli, it's from Jungle Book. And he's mentored by all the animals in his life. Okay, the second paragraph of the book says, a mentor is somebody who tells you the truth, not necessarily what you wanted to hear. And when we read that, we said, 
what else can we call it but Mowgli? <laughs> and by the way, once it, people hear the name, they remember it. So that's why it was that. But the actual inspiration behind the book, if I can just take two seconds, I, I have a profit-making business, which started as an entrepreneur. And I said at 18, so I've been 18 times up there. I became suffocated from the business. And I had a, actually the guy in San Francisco, he said, whenever you travel around the world, and I traveled a lot, buy a book in the bookshop at the airport that might inspire some passion inside you, which is outside your business. So I now have a very large library at home. Sometimes I read the first chapter, I read the first page, and didn't like the book. But I read one, which was Fortune of the Bottom Pyramid by C.K. Prahlad, I mentioned earlier. And I took myself off for a weekend in September 2006 to Alaka Beach Resort, for those of you who know it well. And on a Saturday morning on the beach, I started crying, reading the book, to see the difference those entrepreneurs had made. And I asked Maggie, where's Maggie? There she is. My PA, who's wonderful here. I said, get me to see that man. So for six months, she knocked on the door, and finally we had an answer come back. If you want to meet him, be in Michigan Business School for a class I have with students on entrepreneurship, and I went. The rest is history. Okay? Good. I got a one quick, quick comment. Here. Sorry. <laughs> no I, I was looking for a microphone somewhere. Yes. I can you see, see one. You hear, you hear me somewhere. Uh, the, the, on the point you mentioned about the choosing men, mentor and mentee, mm -hmm. I've done something in Kuwait that uh, no other people have done it before, where I chose an NLP, near linguistic programming, personal development coach. Mm -hmm. And NLP teaches you how to build rapport, rapport, rapport yeah. with the person in, in front of you. And it teaches you all the skill how to build rapport where you could stay with someone 10 hours, five hours without getting bored. You just stay there and uh, build rapport with them. So maybe you want to maybe implement no, I, I, this on the, uh, on the program you have where you, if, you, if, you, if the mentee has chosen the mentor, mm -hmm. also give some, and the human development side aspect of this where the mentor have an NLP aspect so they could learn how to build rapport mm -hmm. or rapport with the, uh, with the, men with the mentee. Yeah. And I will be there at 625.